Okay, let's talk a little bit about this whole cap M thing and what is happening. Up until this point in finance, we've talked about things like capital budgeting when we're trying to decide whether we should invest in a project or not. How did we decide upon that? Well, we looked at the net present value. How do we find our net present value? Well, we basically just took one discount rate and said, this is kind of our company's cost of capital or you know what we expect to return on investments so we're going to use that to discount our cash flows and if we get a positive MPV uh, that's great we should invest in the project if we get a negative MPV we shouldn't but what we haven't taken into account there is the idea of risk right we have basically said oh these are the cash flows you're gonna get in the future for this project discount them back and see if we get a positive MPV however especially when you're investing in kind of a new market or a new industry or kind of venturing into the unknown, which a lot of companies do, there is an element of risk that comes with that. And that's what CAPM is all about. So let's kind of break this calculation down and see where it's coming from. So RI, that's the expected return on your investment. So whatever this new investment uh, is, this is, this is sort of what you can expect as a rate to get back. And what is that rate made up of? Well, it starts at the risk-free rate. This is risk-free, and again, these are these are basically interest rates you can think of. So the risk-free rate is obviously um, kind of more of a of a practical of a yeah, um, concept sort of that we use to study finance as opposed to a purely practical one. But you can think of that as as something that if you place your money in a bank account, it's basically risk-free whatever return you're going to get, and it's going to be small, especially today. You don't earn much in a bank account. You could also think of it as like a GIC, so that's a guaranteed investment. You know the exact return, uh, the exact rate of return, and the exact interest you're going to earn on it. So it starts at the risk-free rate. Now, if there was no um, risk and no uh, benefit to investing in whatever project this might be, and RI just equaled RF, then still there would probably be no sense in investing in this project because. Why would I even bother when I could just put it in the bank, put the money in the bank and earn the exact same return, right? Investors want to earn higher returns with less risk. So that's where the second piece of the equation comes in. Let's look at this difference here. This is made up of RM, which is the return from, uh, the expected return from the market you're entering. So expected market return. So that means if Again, let's say let's say Ford Motor Company, they're going to invest in, I don't know, hovercrafts or something. Then there's probably a large potential return on investment in that, uh, in that industry or in that market. What we want to know is how much larger is that return than the risk-free rate. So you see risk-free is here again and we're taking the difference. So this difference, you can think of this as sort of a, a margin or the difference between what I can earn in this market versus what I could earn by just putting the money in the bank account. So that's why we take the difference there. But of course, with every increase in return that investors can expect, there's got to be an element of risk. And that's where beta comes in. So beta is this measurement um, of risk for any particular investment. And it's a way that we, um, we can compare one industry to another, right? Just looking at the returns alone, sure, um, hovercrafts might have an expected return of 25%, a huge return. Um, but another company investing in surfboards may ha only have a potential return of 14%. But how do we... Obviously, 25% return is better than 14% return, but how do we sort of compare apples to apples? That's where the beta comes in because that adds an element of risk. So if we look at this equation all in one, we're going to start with our risk-free rate. Every investment will start as the risk-free rate is sort of the basis. Then we're going to add on this risk margin, we'll call it, the difference between what we can earn in this new market versus the risk-free rate, but that's going to get multiplied by a beta, which, again... Is basically a percentage up or down um, that either devalues that risk margin or or increases it um, based on how risky the investment might be. 
So help, hopefully that gives you a better idea of what Cap M is. Capital Asset Pricing Model. Again, you're looking at investing in some capital, and rather than just looking at MPV straight up, we are adding an element of risk to the return that we might get. Hopefully this uh, helps a lot. You can always email us more questions, info at arnoldtutoring.com. Thanks.